the Holy Spirit of God that uses me and does it all through me. Amen. I give him all the honor and the glory. I apologize for forgetting the word. That's why I have to write notes. Uh, the older I get, the more I forget. It's amazing how that works. <laughs> if you would this morning, I've preached on this subject probably two or three times. I actually have a, a completely different message I was going to preach this morning. I began this week studying Ezekiel chapter 38 and was yeah. going to preach on Ezekiel 38. And, and uh, in fact, in the middle of the week, everything got changed. Uh, I got to read and study other verses and, and the Holy Spirit just changed the whole thing. And so if you would turn with me in your Bibles to Galatians chapter 5, and I want to talk about by my spirit. And what I just said is in reference to what I'm going to preach on today. I'm going to preach on one of the jobs of the Holy Spirit, which is to reproduce. Amen. Reproduction is the job of the Holy Spirit of God. If you're in Galatians chapter 5, I'm going to begin reading in verse 22. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, against such there is no law. Now, I was reading a book this week about an apple tree, and more particular about the apple trees in western North Carolina, and I found something out. I found out that you can take a crab apple tree, which produces the, the scrubbiest the sours, sour, 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 that's the word, and the ugliest apples you've ever seen. They're the ugliest ones in the orchard. But you can cut that crab apple tree down, and if you cut it down at the base, you can cut a V in that trunk, and you can graft a red delicious apple tree in that tree, in that crab apple tree. Mm -hmm. And if that graph takes from that day forward, that crab apple tree will only produce red delicious apples mm -hmm. from that day forward. In many ways, I think that's a picture of what God has done for you and me as believers. According to verses 19, 20, and 21, we were crab apple trees. Mm -hmm. Let's look at verses 19. It said, Now the works of the flesh, that's us, are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, <laughs> hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, hearsays, envies, murders, drunkenness, rivalings, and such like, of the which I tell you before, as I have told you in times past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Now, that's who we were before <laughs> we had the Holy Spirit of God living within us. Mm -hmm. So now, that lets me know that in the flesh, we were crab apple trees. Mm -hmm. And when the Holy Spirit came in and grafted us yes. into the body of Christ, yes. we became red delicious trees. Yeah. 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 Now, how can a crab apple tree become a red delicious. How can crab apple people become red delicious people? That's the question I want to ask. How can God produce beautiful fruit in the likes of you and me? Now think about this for a moment. The truth is it is never my fruit or your fruit. It's true. That's right. It is the fruit of the Holy Spirit of God. That's right. Yes, sir. 
We cannot do it within ourselves. Mm -hmm. We cannot create it. It has to be grafted into us by the Holy Spirit of God. I want you to notice that there are nine different characteristics of the fruit of the Spirit. The fruit is singular, but the manifestations of it or the attributes of it are multiple. I'll give you an example. Ice cream is ice cream, but it may be vanilla, it may be chocolate, it may be strawberry, it may be peach, it may be black walnut, it may be any number of different assortments of ice cream, but it is still ice cream. Mm -hmm. So that's what the fruit of the Spirit is. Now I want us to look at how the Holy Spirit produces Jesus in us. And that's the work of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit reproduces the charity of Jesus in us. Now, there is nothing in our human will or nothing in our human nature that can produce this kind of love. It is a God love. Yeah. Charity and love are synonymous. They're the same word. But there's nothing within us that can produce that love. That love has to come through the blessed Holy Spirit of God. Yeah. So it was love that Paul spoke of in Romans 5, 8 when he said, but God commanded his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Yeah. That's the love of Christ that the Holy Spirit reproduces in us. <laughs> now, it's Christ's love that is possessed. What, what do you mean by that? The love that the Holy Spirit reproduces is a possession. It's something that we own. It is ours. Uh, let's just be honest with ourselves. It is impossible to produce the love of God on the outside without having the love of God on the inside. True. It just doesn't happen. That is the love of Christ possessed in us. It must be within us before it can work its way out and that people see Christ in us. That is the love of Christ possessed. Then I want us to notice that it is the love of Christ portrayed. That's like a picture. You know, once you take a picture of something, I, I've got pictures of Aiden and Allie and, and Linda in my billfold that I've had for years and years. Uh, and they don't, they don't go away. They don't change. Now, the person changes, yeah. but the picture doesn't change. The portrayal of them doesn't change. Listen. So, this is... The love of Christ that is portrayed is, is love that cannot be hidden. We can't hide it behind a bushel. If you want a picture of this, turn to John chapter 3, verse 16. For God so loved the world that he what? That he gave his only begotten Son. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. That is the love of God portrayed in his son. Mm -hmm. That's what the Holy Spirit reproduces in us. Now the Holy Spirit also reproduces the celebration of Jesus in us. The second thing here is that joy. The fruit of the Spirit is joy. Excuse me. The word means gladness or delight. And that's what the Holy Spirit wants to reproduce in us. So it is not getting up in the morning and saying, I'm going to be a happy Christian today. How many times have we said that and we turned out? I, I got to tell you this. I, I, I love talking about myself. 
Uh, <laughs> <laughs> stupid things I do. Uh, this one day this week I got up and I said, Lord, help me to be a blessing at work today. And I managed to hack off everybody in the plane. <laughs> That's just the way it works sometimes. I can't do it within myself. It is committing and yielding yourself to the Holy Spirit of God as he reproduces the same joy that was in Christ in you. We can't create it. It has to come from within. It has to be the joy that Christ, this whole thing is about reproducing the fruits of the Spirit of Christ in us. So Jesus is the fountain of joy. And I preached on this the other day. If you, if you remember the, the parable in Matthew 25 of the servants that were given five talents and two talents and one talent. And the servants that were given five talents and two talents, did you ever notice what the Lord said? He says, enter thou into the joy of the Lord. Yeah. It is Christ's joy to bless you for things that you do for him. It's his joy and delight, not man's. <clears throat> now, the same word is used in Luke 15 in the parable of the lost silver, the lost sheep, and the lost son. And it says in the ending there that there's joy in heaven when one sinner repents. Yep. <laughs> it's Christ's joy. It's a, it's a heavenly joy. It's a divine joy. So, Jesus is the fullness of joy. And we've got to understand that. And Romans 14, 17 says it this way. Paul calls it joy in the Holy Ghost. That's the joy that the Holy Spirit of God can reproduce in us. Joy in the Holy Ghost. Now the Holy Spirit also reproduces the calm of Jesus in us. But the fruit of the Spirit is peace. The word indicates tranquility, uh, quietness, and rest. It's calm. That's what the word means. In 1 Corinthians 14, 33, we are told that God is not the author of confusion, but of peace. <laughs> He wants to give us, the Holy Spirit does, reproducing us the peace that Jesus had in his life. Now, God's people are going to have to worry and wring their hands and get into a frenzy over what's going on in the world because we're his. <laughs> He's got this under control. I go chase a rabbit here for just a second. You know, there must be at least one Christian in the Democrat Party. Uh, because their theme the other night brought out that Joe Biden is light and Donald Trump is darkness. Now, the only place they could have got that was from the Word of God. <laughs> but Jesus is light and Satan is darkness. So somebody had to have read something from the Word of God for them to come up with that. But that's neither here nor there. And I apologize for that. <laughs> the Holy Ghost is here to reproduce the calmness of Jesus in us. I also find that word in Philippians 4 7, where it says, And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Listen, it is not something that we can create. Read that verse. It is an overflow from God. Amen. It's his joy. It's his love. It's his peace. And the Holy Spirit can reproduce that that was in Christ Jesus in us. Then the Holy Spirit reproduces the constancy of Jesus. And it says the fruit of the Spirit is long-suffering. It means that that, that has, indicates continuing, consistency. Okay? Now, 
The word also means forbearance or endurance. So he is long suffering. Christ was long suffering. If you read, if you remember back in in Noah's day, the word of God says that God was long suffering concerning Noah and the people. He gave them 120 years to repent, and they didn't do it, but he was long-suffering for that whole time. 1 Peter 3.20 says, God was long-suffering in the days of Noah. To, to say at least he put up with them is how we say it, and all the sinful things that was going on at the time in, in that land. But God was long-suffering. 2 Timothy 4, 5, Paul tells us to endure afflictions, forbearance, endurance, continuance, long-suffering. That's what it means. Not only should we put up with something, but we are to keep moving forward while we're putting up with it. Now, remember, Christ endured the cross while suffering the shame. Yes. He was not happy with what was going on, but he endured it why? for our sakes. Yes. For our sakes. He knew there was no other way. He already prayed to God. Christ said, God could be in a way that this cut past me. God said, hey, there is no other way. That's why he came into the world as a man, as a human. It's to bear the sins of the world mm -hmm. on your body. Now, some of you say, well, I, I just can't go any further. I, I just can't do it. I can't go any further. You can't. It's a simple fact. You can't. But the Holy Spirit of God can lead you. Yes, sir. He can do it through you. He can reproduce the Spirit of Jesus in regards to endurance, forbearance, and long suffering, and make it so that you can carry on. Now I want to read you here how Paul saw the reproductive work of the Holy Spirit. In regards to the doctrine of the unity of the body of Christ in us. Turn with me to Ephesians real quick. Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4. Verse 1. I therefore the prisoner of the Lord beseech you that you walk worthy of the vocation wherewith you are called. With all lowliness and meekness and long suffering, forbearing one another in love, Amen. endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. Mm -hmm. There is one body <clears throat> and one Spirit, even as you are called in one hope of your calling. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. Mm -hmm. One God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. Amen. That's how Paul put it. I thought it was beautiful how he said it. <laughs> then turn to me to chapter 5, verse 9 and 10. Ephesians chapter 5, verses 9 and 10. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth. Proving what is acceptable unto the Lord. Amen. If you'll let the Holy Spirit of God produce the fruit in you, it will be acceptable unto the Lord. Yes. All righteousness and truth. Yeah. <clears throat> you know, going back to the apple, crab apple tree. I, I've never walked through a forest or an orchard and heard a tree say, Lord, help me to bear fruit today. 
I've never heard one say that. Okay? But what they do do is they cooperate with the sap. <laughs> they are under the leading direction of the sap. When the warm winds come from the south and they come up into the Carolinas and they start hitting those trees and that sap starts coming out and it starts running, the trees cooperate with the flow of the sap. And when the sap starts running, then the blossoms start coming out. And when the blossoms start coming out, then the fruit starts producing. So it cooperates with the flow of the sap. When we cooperate with the Holy Spirit of God, the flow of the Holy Spirit, we too will blossom and grow and produce fruit. Yes. Through the power of the Holy Spirit. Yes, sir. Not of our own. That tree can't grow back unless that sap comes. Now, that blossom can't become an apple unless the sap has nourished it. So we are just like that when we cooperate with the Holy Spirit. It means that it takes this old ugly, sour, scabby human being and makes it a beautiful, red, delicious Christian. Amen. Amen. It will only let the Holy Spirit of God dwell us and reproduce the fruit of Jesus Christ in our lives. I like what it says in uh, John chapter 15 when Jesus was talking he said, abide in me. I want to be in that tree. I want to let the fruit be reproduced by the flow of the Holy Spirit of God. Listen, producing fruit and I'll use a verse of scripture for this. It's not by my might, not by my power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. Yeah. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, we thank you for this beautiful illustration that we gave us today to use on the crab apple tree becoming a red delicious. Lord, may we as crab apple people Accept you as our Savior. Invite the Holy Spirit of God in when He comes in the moment we ask you to be our personal Savior. And Lord, may we let Him flow through our lives and make us red, delicious Christians for you. Lord, I pray that if there be one here today that doesn't know you in the free heart of sin, I pray, Lord, that you would convict the sin deeper than that sin can stay. Lord, that you would bring them today to the saving knowledge of Jesus. And Lord, if there be Christians here that are blocking the flow of the Holy Spirit, I pray, dear God, that they might come down today on this altar, open their hearts to thee and say, Lord, I'm tired and I'm tired and I'm tired of trying to do it on my own. I want the Holy Spirit of God to reproduce the fruits of the Spirit in me. And God will thank you and we'll praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Number 238. <clears throat>